Thank you very much. It was just a coincidence that, that uh, the police were coming at the time I had my degree. <laughs> but I'm very happy to be here, ladies and gentlemen. But this is just what the world needs, another doctor on television. But I like it, Dr. Hope, it sounds nice, and I have a couple of house calls I want to make. And I'm really going to act like a doctor. I'm going on strike tomorrow. I say that because we've had a doctor strike in L.A., and it's pretty bad. You couldn't get sick or you couldn't get a starting time on the golf course. But this degree makes two of us happy. My mother always wanted me to be a doctor, and I always wanted a college degree without doing any homework. <laughs> but I can't believe, I can't believe you're giving me a real degree like this. It's probably signed by Howard Hughes. <laughs> I don't believe that document either. No, my folks believed in education. My mother wanted me to go to Yale, and my father wanted me to go to grammar school. And I got my education catch as catch can. I studied anatomy, sneaking behind the barn and reading the police gazette and whiz bang. And I studied geography, reading the names of passing boxcars. Till I was 14, I for thought the first three states of the Union were Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. <laughs> no, but I don't want you to think I'm making light of this honor that you bestowed on me today. Receiving this Doctor of Humanities degree or Doctor of Public Service brings to mind the many happy days I spent in school. And I'm reminded of something one of my teachers said to me when I was in the fourth grade. One day she took me aside, put her hand on my shoulder and said, Leslie, that's my name, Leslie Towns Hope. She said, you're a child with a lot of interests and I see you going down many roads. Of course, she didn't know that Bing and Dorothy would be on them with me. <laughs> Did she talk with me a while about how important education was? And then she said to me, now take your kite, go out to recess, and play with that nice little Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> I'm not saying how long ago I went to school, but Indians used to come to our cafeteria to teach the cook how to prepare corn. <laughs> In those days, we thought a handheld calculator was a wooden ruler. I asked President Bakrow if I should do a few light humorous things like this, and he was very nice. He said, take your chances. <laughs> no, but I was kind of happy to see Scott Oyen, who was the president of your senior class, who invited me here, and I was glad to see him get that added honor. He invited me because he thought, since this is an election year, you'd like to see a comedian who isn't running for anything. <laughs> graduates and to your parents and their bankers who helped make this occasion possible. <laughs> this is your year, the year of youth. In 200 years our country's gone from George and Martha to Donnie and Marie. And as our bicentennial graduating class, you're in a special position. The eyes of the world are focused on this 200-year-old baby, and the care and nurturing of this kid named democracy is in your hands. It's so obvious that it's worth discussing. You are the future. You'll determine the road that this country and this world will be following. You can take us to the greatest heights ever known to man. You've been in training for the last four years, and you're all qualified for mankind's Olympics only the promise of better quality of life for all the participants. Yes, those Americans in the class of 1776 were courageous and bold enough to think of a new way of life. They committed themselves to a far better way than they knew or could be realized in their lifetime. The great seal of these United States carried a phrase in Latin that means a new order for the way ages. The term paper of that first class of 76, entitled the U.S. Constitution, provided for neither special class nor privilege. A man could move up or he could slip down. Neither the Declaration of Independence nor the Constitution claimed to make timid men courageous, or lazy men industrious, or stupid men bright. But these documents unlock doors to a new way of life and let Americans walk through each one to his own destiny. And the doors to freedom are still open in America. Each of you must walk through and find your own destiny. Discover your own good fortune. You've taken a giant step with your studies. 
Thomas Jefferson, one of the great founding fathers, said, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free, it expects what never was and never will be. These are three words. There are three words so uniquely American that they can describe a whole way of life, but so familiar that their meaning can be easily overlooked. Freedom of choice, freedom to choose an occupation, a religion, a government, to make of your life what you will, not what you are ordered. This is a nation with a proud heritage. It is not yet a perfect nation. Anyone who says it is without fault is either flunk political science or logic one. There are problems out there, and I don't mean just political problems. There are diseases out there that have to be cured. There are social ills that need a treatment. There are problems in almost every field of endeavor. That's why we're bringing in the new team, the class of 76. We know there's much work to be done. We already have enough people who are willing to sit back and tell us that we have problems. Besides, you don't really need a college education to do that. We need the people who are going to recognize reality, see the work that has to be done, roll up their sleeves and say to themselves, well, even if I can't make it perfect, I'm going to make it a little bit better. That's the new spirit of 76. Do as much as you can and leave a little bit left for the class of 2076. Continuing the work is not just rhetoric. Many things have been accomplished in the past 200 years, but today it demands even more creativity. The brave men of the original 76 started from practically nothing. It was easy for them to make improvements. Today there are still improvements to be made, but it takes creative and searching minds to find out where and how. Thanks in part to television, the communications media, you've been exposed to all your life and the most advanced educational system ever available to a graduating class. You are the best informed, brightest, most well-educated group of Americans this country has ever seen. I'm not trying to flatter you, I'm just stating the facts. And it would be a shame for you not to seek the solutions to our problems, not to go forth and better the American way of life. Our most gifted songwriter and poet, Bob Dylan, in this song, Blowing in the Wind, wrote, how many times can a man turn his head pretending he just doesn't see? I know that you won't turn your heads, and the class of 76 will help all Americans to hold their heads higher than ever. John F. Kennedy, who wasn't much older than you are when he entered public service, had great faith in young people and their ability to take a place in the world community. Just like you, President Kennedy realized that there would always be a need to speak out and to make change in our way of life. But he also knew that this change would have to be done between men and not between armies. He said, if we make peaceful revolution impossible, we make violent revolution inevitable. And maybe because he had young children and because he cared about the world they'd grow up in and because he knew the day would come when everyone would have the bomb, he said something 15 years ago that is as relevant and meaningful today as it was then. Mankind must put an end to war or war will put an end to mankind. Nobody wants war and there's nobody I've met who loves peace more than those who have seen war. At the same time, I've never known anyone who would be more willing to fight than those people who've enjoyed peace and freedom and aren't about to let anyone take that away from us. Peace and defense go hand in hand. And as long as our dedication to both remains strong, no foreign power will ever test either one of them. And finally, maybe the best word I can pass along to you is the one that I almost started out with in this serious bit, pray. Pray that this nation will continue to produce more young, well-educated people like you, who we're all counting on to get the national heads together in the right direction, toward peace through strength and belief in one another, toward a new humanity, toward the rest of the world's people, toward a sensitive resurrection of American pride, character, and decency. These six men, your continuing intellectual curiosity and your faith in the Almighty sustain you. Today, you're graduating from St. Ambrose with hope. The faith and charity are up to you. Good luck and God bless you.